Back to one. Walter pulled the comforter down below his chest. His bedroom was beginning to warm as the sun glided through the window. A blanket over his face, soaking up the remembrance of the almost unbearable chill from the night before. He loved the beauty of winter, but the nights were getting the best of him. At eighty-five, his body was contention with his mind, and today was one of the harder ones. His legs were stiff and heavy, and they dropped off the side of the bed, hitting the door as much ease as the two fifty-pound dumbbells. Hello, diabetes! Missing his slippers, his feet landed on a slick, cold oak floor, grumbling under his breath about the comfort of carpet. He had to go to the bathroom, pronto. His teeth at this point in his life were much like his daily memory, that were one moment and gone the next. He had pulled them out of the glass of water on the nightstand and thoroughly rinsed them before, removing them into his mouth. The mint tickled his palate. His tongue swelled around his side, pressing him in place. He didn't need them giving into the laws of gravity during breakfast. He never used pro, pro, polaridate or any other adhesive. It's messy. A water despised anything messy. He could hear his name being called on open door, bathroom door. Why must they shout for me every morning? You know I do go downstairs probably at seven o'clock. No mystery, right on as it's clockwork. Yes, Vivian, Dad, you were you always ready. Breakfast on the table, it's getting cold. I have to take Robert to pick up the, his car. Brakes are finished, I need to be gone a few minutes. Go, go, I'm coming down in a moment. Just need to put on my sweater. Lovely girl, but a bit daft, I'll be fine. OK, there's eggs and toast. Coffee pot is still on. Your cup is in right beside it. Oh, what, am I blind now? Just leave, leave it, Vivian. In case I must can muster enough brain power to figure out how to pour a cup of coffee. He heard the front door close. Ah, oh, some peace and quiet. He thought, what a finish buttoning up his sweater, a blue, dark blue cardigan. His late wife, Gina, gave it to him in a brief Christmas present. Last one they spent together before she passed away. He stood his head half caught the looking in the mirror. You remember it? It reminded him of the first morning he put it on. It was brighter then, and the elbows were not worn. They were now, and he would give him a feeling of being close to her. Never a renewing hug for Gina. As long as he had it, he would always have her arms around him. He ran his arm, uh, hands down the front. Smoothing it out and then knees crackling, headed downstairs to the kitchen. Breakfast, he was shoved, shoveled past his lips, undercooked bacon and mediocre eggs, slid down an extra dose of grace. Pouring a second cup of coffee, he put it with him in the front porch to watch the day begin. The front porch was a perfect resting spot to plant himself, serve an ex marine. Walter never forgot his training, he was an official gatekeeper for the block. The snow came in seasonally, only as it does this year. A morning hour was at last. Most of the landscape left most of the landscape undisturbed. It had been an image of Thomas Kinderbeck, Wind of Hating. There was something almost magical about sweeping layers, powdery white revealing the gleam of the fleet freeze. Even neighbouring rooftops were transformed for the dirty brown shingling and prismatic icicles wrinkling in the sunset. Each one belonged to a fairy tale you wanted to believe had a happy ending. Water lips almost formed a grin until two cars pulled up the doorway and went in a quickly replaced with a scowl. His son Robert and his wife Vivian were home for the mechanics. As soon as Robert emerged from the driver's seat, Walter rolled his eyes. He knew what was coming. It's freezing out there. Here. You're gonna, you're gonna catch a phenomenon. You can't catch pneumonia from sitting on a porch. Your bum can sit, get, get chilly. The effect of pneumonia, I assure you, is not an issue. Walter laughed. You know what I mean. What about your arthritis? Don't tell me that cold it won't affect it. We both know that's a lie. I wear my heavy coat. I have a thermos shirt on my sweater, an old marine boots with wool socks, and down a down winter blanket on my legs. I think my arthritis is well protected from the barrels of first snow. Walter slid his hands under the blanket. 
We would just worry about you, Robert's eyes narrowed. Well, since I am a grown man, I'm the one who nearly raised you. I think you should stop being such a pain in the backside. Let me join my peace. And for the love of Harry, Henry, tell your wife that I'm not the complete Bay of Laboon. And I know where the kitchen is for breakfast and how to get a cup of coffee. It's a brain stage, you know. Although sometimes I wonder if you two might not benefit from a lump of me yourselves. Walter looked away. That's enough, Dad, Vivian Cooks. For you, very every day, at least you could do is show her the respect and thank you would be nice too. Walter pursed his lip, leaned back in his chair and adjusted his blanket and black on his legs. No, son, you're right. I'm sorry, Vivian. Thank you for breakfast this morning. It was very good. You're welcome, Vivian. The eyes brightened. Recognition. But for the next time, could you make my bacon a little crispier? I felt like I was eating grease pr- soaked pieces of cardboard. Dad! It's... No, it's okay, Robert. Vivian looked, took her husband's hand and squeezed it. Chris, your bacon next time. You got it. Would you like some tea? Thank you, Dr. Long. It'll be fine. What he knew what he said was wrong, but he couldn't help himself. The angry side just bubbled up. Didn't matter who was the primary to the explosion. They were just destined to be one of his many verbal casualties. Sarcasm was sharp and cut like a bunting blade. It's always casualties. He heard the door slam and turned to his left. Old Kevin Boy Ryan bundled up from a wall, pea coat, black glo- leather gloves and pl- green plaited shirt wrapped around his face. He was carrying a nylon sports bag on his shoulder. When he reached Walter, he weighed and pulled a scarf down and went from his mouth. Good morning, Walter. Isn't it, isn't it cold outside? Yes, it is cold. No, Walter, I don't mean anything look really awesome with snow by turned in a circle Walt chuckled he knew exactly what Ryan had meant he was just playing with him not wanting to deal with his exhaustion having to carry on an unwelcome conversation Walter would often have trouble understanding people this usually led to their frustration and venerable desire leave mission accomplished it worked perfectly most of the time but never with Ryan but Walter figured the boy was too dim to realise his attempt of conversation just continuing unlearning root book sarcasm. Most of the time it'd go to the house and leave Ryan standing outside, but this morning he didn't have to. What much to was was a surprise. Just waited one more time, went up to his way. Curious for Walter. I wonder what the boy's up to. You know, need to know was short lived, however, because it wasn't long before he forgot about Walter Ryan O'Connor and drifted off to sleep. Come here. Come here, hurry, come on. You can do it, I'm, I'm right here. Reach your, my, my hand, I, I'll pull you on. Me, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. I'll take care of you. But you have to come to me. Now, buddy's father, body, Walter's body shook violently. Dad, Dad, wake up, you're dreaming, Robert shouted. Robert, uh, slowly opened his eyes, he struggled to focus. Robert was hovering over him with a heavy brow. It was clear he wasn't happy. You're falling asleep out here. You've been over an hour. Your body's ice cold. We have to get you inside. He grabbed his father's arm. Phone grip hoisted him in a strange position. Walter pushed him away. I can do it myself. I'm not an invalid, you know. Anyway, the way you and your wife treat me sometimes. I think I was ready for six feet soil bed. You're having one of the dreams, weren't you? Robert's voice softened. Bob Walter did not a word. He took, shook his head. Come on, let's make, get you inside and warm you up. Vivian made a tomato soup and sandwiches for food. Now it's a, it's a game on a few minutes. We we'll, can all watch how badly New, New England going to lose to the Giants. Walter felt a joy of excitement living in his weary body. If nothing had let, let it be late, late more than to watch his favourite football team merge victoriously. If they were disappointing, if they were playing portraits, the new team wouldn't disappoint him. Beyond getting beat going in, he reached for Robert's arm. Son, yeah, I saw him. Walter's eyes watered. I know, Dad. I know you did. Robert patted Walter's back. <laughs>